Nope. This is a wonderful theology lesson for change. But it starts out sounding rotten. Jesus died for your sins. Motherfucker. He spent three short hours on that cross. Whereas the normal person crucified would stay there for days and days and days and days suffering. Many of the martyrs after Jesus Christ suffered immensely worse than Jesus suffered. And it seems that God punished if God punished Jesus Christ for all the sins of the world, God damn it, I demand that Jesus suffer more than every person, past, present, and future, combined. No, but did, did Jesus got to eat three short, pitiful hours on that fucking cross? Come on. Was it all? But but I f suddenly feel a sense of hope. Doctor D. James Kennedy, the late, back in the eighties or no early nineties, he was preaching about Jesus' crucifixion. He said Jesus suffered things on that cross that the human mind cannot possibly imagine nor comprehend. Oh? Like what? Well, I was reading Bill Weiss's book, 23 Minutes in Hell. And in this book, he says, he is, he, he, can't, he cannot tell whether it was a vision or whether it was actually out of his body. But he said, he found himself in hell. Ow, I climbed the tree and I got this goddamn hernia. I need stem cells or I need to fucking kill myself. He was in hell and he and he knew he was going to be there forever and ever and ever. And the hopelessness and the despair, utter misery. But then Jesus come that, comes down and r r suddenly he remembers that he was a Christian. Now, what had what had happened is that Jesus wanted him to feel what every person in hell feels, knowing they're going to be there forever. So he caused them to forget that he was a Christian. What if Jesus Christ on that cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And being punished for our sins, since if you die in your sins, you will spend eternity burning like a piece of bacon separated from God what if the thought suddenly occurred to him hey you didn't know what you you were getting into you are gonna die and you are gonna spend forever and ever and ever separated from God in hell and this, and he really, and God caused, or whatever, God, God caused his mind to forget that he was going to, to real, to quote unquote realize he wasn't going to rise from the dead. He wasn't going to be king of kings and lord of lords. He was going to have to die and spend eternity in hell pay for the sins of every man, woman, boy, girl, and child. And he still, and he, knowing this full well, knowing he's going to be damned forever and ever, he still chose to do it. Now that right there would make me, if that was true, I would delete every one of my YouTube videos where I curse and rage and rant and get in this God, and I would fall down at Jesus' feet. Especially if God the Father had the same love. Especially, especially if it had been God the Father and that cross, he, and He would have done the same thing. Right? That that would make me cry 
oceans of tears. That would make me so happy, more than more happy than if I had my three dreams to know that God loved me with that kind of love. Well, it sounds beautiful. Any thing less, any love less than this, for me, not just for the whole world, but for me personally, is unacceptable because it's not God's best. And God being infinite, out of man, is infinite best. Any love less than this would be like when Cain and Abel offer their sacrifices. Abel gave his best and God accepted it. Cain gave a half-hearted offering and God did not accept it. Was God's sacrifice Jesus' offering for my sins like Cain's offering? Or like Abel's offering. Because I will be goddamn if I want to give up my three dreams for God who will not give me his best. Uh, I go, God, fuck if he's mightier than me. Might makes right. That does not change how I feel. So fuck off. In other words, I want Jesus' best. Not as a man, but as God himself. But it, not as a finite, piss poor man. Who's, but as the infinite. God, the Son of God. And I demand that God the Father, if it had been God the Father and not cross, that he would have been willing to do the same thing for his love me. For his love for me. If I can get that love from God, I want that more than my three dreams. Don't get me wrong, still, without my three dreams, I'll be complete and whole. But without my three dreams, I will not be completely complete and holy whole. But it's too good to be true. So I'm left with this fragmented love of God, this fragmented theology. And God damn it, it leaves me still hungry. It does not, he that, whosoever eateth of the bread that I drinketh of the water I give to him, said Jesus to the Samaritan woman in John chapter before, shall never thirst again. Well, Jesus, what you and God the Father have for me leaves me still thirsty. Unless what I just said earlier in this video is true, I'm still thirsty. And only my three dreams can complete what you, your salvation, started to complete but cannot complete. Your salvation makes me complete, Jesus. But without my, but it does not make me completely complete without my three dreams. Spit, spit, spit. She loves me more than she loves herself. Let me ask you a hypothetical question. Would you, would, under any, under any circumstance, I understand that as God, you cannot self-terminate. It goes against your very nature. It is against your nature. But, would you, if you were a man, What if God was one of us, came down here to earth? Would you be willing, would you jump in from the, the, the bullet to save me from dying? If you knew that when you died, 
Lights out. Game over. Would you love me as much as my mother loves me? God, because I don't believe you do. And for that, I hate you. I love you. Part of me needs me. Need you. Part of me needs you in my life. But I hate you. Especially if I can't have my three dreams. Let me ask a hypothetical question. And I think answer it. Spit, spit, spit. This is never going to happen, but if, 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 what if, God in heaven had to make a choice. Either he go out of existence, oblivion, nothing. Or all us born again Christians up there. Praise his name, go out of existence. What would he choose? I'll answer it like this. Your body. If you had a choice. Lose both your arms. And both your legs. Or lose your head. Which would you choose to do? You see, the thing with life. Hate abhors death. Life, the nature of life itself, is to prolong itself perpetually. God, being whole, cannot being complete in himself. To be completely God, he cannot become less than what he is, or he's not God. Spit, spit, spit. God cannot self terminate, in other words. Because if he did that, there would be nothing left. There would not even be darkness. Close your eyes. There would not even. What do you see? Nothing. There would not even be that. Pretend you have eyes in your back. Open them. What do you see? Nothing. That's what there would be. Now, hypothetically speaking, if God could terminate himself, his existence, go out of exi existence, and the born again believers would go on forever being good, 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 holy, righteous, pure, without evil, without death. Without the element of death, sickness, or bad. But if... Now, 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 if, okay, if God was the right arm, and the born-again Christians were the head, that would never, that is impossible. But say, just say for the sake of argument, then God would be willing to would rather he go out of existence and we go on living than we go out of existence in the whole and there be absolutely nothing no life, no light, no light, whatever this is what I believe when you love something you become one with the object you love well, David and Jonathan, their best friends he loved them as his own soul in the Hebrew language, I think they were knit together as one. When you love somebody and they hurt, you hurt because you are one with them in your heart. And when God loves you, you I, I, I think you get the picture. To love someone is to make it part, expand, you expand yourself and you become. The person you love. And that's why it feels so good to love somebody else. Because you're expanding yourself. You're become, it's God becoming bigger. God who is infinitely big. Becoming yet bigger. And when you love another person. Ah, oh, fuck it, man. I'm...
Well, spit, spit, spit. Well, spit, spit, spit.